Hey there, my name is Catherine Grayson Nance, and I'm here with Kindle React and Progress Software to talk you through the Kindle React Date Picker. We're going to talk about why you should choose Kindle React, how to get the component into your application, and how to configure it to do everything you need and then some. That's a lot to get into, so let's go ahead and get started. So, why Kindle React? There's a ton of libraries out there, some of them specifically focused on date selection. So why would you choose Kendo? Well, there's a couple answers to that. First, let's talk accessibility. Creating accessible date pickers are it's already a huge task. <laughs> if you've ever tried to create one, then you know. There's so many moving bits and pieces, the drop-down element, it's difficult to navigate by keyboard. It's hard to do. Any other library that you just kind of pick up may or may not be fully accessible in the same way that Kendo React is. We've put in that work so that you don't have to and your users benefit. Another reason is maintenance. You know when you choose Kendo React that you have a library that's being consistently maintained and vetted, that's getting regular releases, that is not being abandoned or maintained by just one guy as a side project. This is something that is reliable, and that's important when it comes to your application. The first step to using the component is just getting it into your application. In this case, we're going to take a look at my demo application, Elkhart's menu system. You can clone it and explore. Um, it's all up on github.com slash Catherine Grayson Nans slash kendo dash demo. Feel free to clone it, fork it, play around with it, whatever you need. As you can see, it is pretty heavily themed, so it doesn't necessarily look like the examples in our docs, but the components work exactly the same. And honestly, you're probably gonna theme it too, right? <laughs> so let's get going. Here is my page. I've already added this import statement, importing the date picker from progress slash kind of react date inputs. That's our library that has all of our date input components. And now here I've got a form set up already using the field set. Um, I've already got my labels in, so I'm just going to add the date picker. And there it is. It's that easy. This is our default configuration. So you'll get this kind of month, day, year, placeholder text. Users can click to expand. There's a scrollable sidebar that lets you quickly jump ahead as far as you want. And then you can jump back, select today by just clicking the today button in the top right corner. There's also a natural focus date that's always going to be on today's date. And then uh, users can quickly kind of skim through, select the dates they need, and submit. This is all well and good, but sometimes you'll want to define a date range so the users can't select dates that are already in the past, for example, or maybe dates that are too far out into the future. This is really easy to do with the Kendo React date picker, so Let's go ahead and knock it out. The first thing we're going to do is create a couple variables. Uh, I'll do one called min and then one called max and pass both of those or set both of those as date objects. For the min, I'll just let that be a new date, which will be today so that uh, anytime a user looks, they can't select anything that is before today, so dates that have already passed. And then for the max, let's say the end of this year. So they can't choose anything into the new year. Then we'll go ahead and pass these into the date picker with min and max. And when we go ahead and take a look over here at our date picker, it's updated. You can see that we don't have all of the months over in the sidebar anymore, just the ones that our users can select from. And dates that are in the past have been grayed out and they're not selectable. This limits our user's selection. They also can't scroll past December. So they can only choose things that we want them to choose. If they decide they're gonna get crafty and try to type something into the uh, date thing specifically, then you'll get this red ring around the outside that tells them there's an error. Sometimes though, you'll need more than just that red ring to tell users what's going on. 
For that reason, we've got validation messages that are built right into the date picker that you can take advantage of to tell your users exactly what they need to fix in order for the form to submit. I've added some things to our page, so let's take a look. You can see here, there's now a handle change vent where we are setting our uh, state with the value that's been selected by the user. This allows us to pass it into our validation message down here, which will then return uh, different types of messaging to the user based on what exactly has gone wrong. We can also set the whole component to just be required so that if there's nothing at all, they'll get a message that tells them, hey, no, you need to actually go back and do this. So let's see how it looks. If I try to submit now with nothing selected, I get that date is required alert. And if I try to pick something outside the selected range, so let's say I'll choose a date in 2033, I get the alert, date must be in range. This is a great UX feature so that your users don't have to guess why they're getting that red ring. They can know exactly what went wrong and how to fix it. What if we need to just disable the component entirely? Good news, that's also a piece of cake. We can just set disabled to true. And as you can see over here, the whole component has been grayed out. It's not clickable, it's not selectable, it can't open the calendar. There's no user interaction that's allowed when disabled is set to true. That way you have full control over when and how your users are able to interact with the component. What if we want to suggest a date to our users so that when they load the page and the date picker appears, there's already a date that we have suggested for them that's pre-populated in the component. Once again, pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and add it to our demo app. I've gone ahead and created a variable here that I've called starting and I've assigned a date object to. This way uh, we can decide what date will load uh, on start in the date picker component. So all we have to do down here is set default value, pass in that starting date, give our page a refresh, and we can see it's automatically starting on the 19th, which is exactly the date that we set. While watching this video, you might have noticed that our date is currently set in the month day year format, and not everybody writes their dates that way. In fact, not very many people, I think, write their dates that way. But we can change it to be whatever we want by just setting the format on our date picker. So here I'll go ahead and pass in, let's just do the month and the year. Now you can see over here it's updated to just say December 2021. I can go ahead and add the day if I wanted to or let's say maybe I want the day over here. So 19 December, 2021. There are a bunch of different formats that are compatible that you can go ahead and just set. There's information on that in the Kendo React date picker docs, all the various formats you can use, but pretty much anything you can think of. Another thing we can do to change the format of how the dates are read is to add week numbers to our calendar. All we have to do is set week number to true. Now when we expand our calendar, there's a column here on the left hand side that adds the numbers next to each week. And there you have it. One beautiful, customizable, accessible React date picker implemented in our application less than 10 minutes. If you ever tried to customize the default HTML date picker or build one from scratch, you already know it takes a lot more than 10 minutes. <laughs> Being able to have a date picker component that's as plug and play as this one is, is a huge time saver and a huge benefit to your development team. For more information about this component and everything it can do, check out the Kendo React date picker docs and check out Kendo React in general for more info on what a professionally maintained complete component library can do for you. Happy coding.